This is the third part of creating an inventory system in Unity. And today we'll be making the hotbar so that we can select which weapon or item we want to be holding in our hand. And also we'll make the stackable items so that when creating the scriptable object for each item, you can set its max stack size and then we'll be able to stack them like this. And you can also be looking forward to making a chest system so that we can put some items to the chest. Some chests will also have random spawning items. We'll jump to the inventory manager script and I will begin by defining an integer for the selected hotbar slot. On the beginning it can be set to 0 because indexes start from 0 and we'll need to check for the input so I will create a private void. And we'll be calling this void constantly in update. And here we'll be just checking if we are pressing 1, we'll set the selected hotbar slot to 0, when we press 2, we'll set it to 1, and so on. You can obviously add as many hotbar slots as you want. Next, we'll make an array of game objects, which will be just storing all of the hotbar slots, so that we can later go through them and decide if it is the selected slot. If it is, we'll make it bigger and set the selected item in our hand. I'm making it serialize field so that we can access it in inspector, but it is not public. And I'm setting the size of the array to 4 because I have 4 slots in the hotbar. Then we'll make another private void, which will be for the hotbar item changed and we'll call it each time when we press one of these keys. Make sure to call it after we set the selected hotbar slot and we'll also call it in the start so that it correctly sets the size of the hotbar slots. In the void hotbar item changed, we'll first need to set to inactive all of the objects that are under the player's hand, which is where we will have all of the items, so we will create a variable for the hand object, which will be just a parent for all of the items. So we have the hand parent, it can be just a transform, and we will go through all of the childs of the hand parent and set them to inactive. Now we'll make a for each loop that will be going through all of the hotbar slots so that we can set their sizes and check if there is some item in the selected slot and if there is, we'll just set active the object in the player's hand. So we have the first part of the for each loop, we are going through all of the hotbar slots, saving it into a variable as a slot, then in beginning I'm defining a vector 3 for the scale, and if the current slot in the for each loop is equal to the selected hotbar slot, I set its scale to 111, and if it is not, I set it to 0.9, and at the end I'm just setting the scale of the slot. Don't forget to assign the hand parent and also the hotbar slots. So again, if you want to drag multiple of the hotbar slots, we can just log the inspector. Then we can select all of the slots, put them in and delete the empty elements. And you can see that as I'm pressing the buttons, the selected slot is always bigger. The inventory obviously still works. I should be able to drag the items to the hotbar, but you can see that I'm not able to see them because they are behind the hotbar, which is what we will be fixing now. The problem with the items not being visible is happening because right now they are under the inventory and under the items in the inventory, that's correct, but when I drag it to the hotbar, the parent isn't changing, so we'll just need to change it in the code. In the void on pointer up, in the part where we are dropping the item, we can just take the new item and say that set parent and which transform will be the parent we can do it using the slot 
So when we have the slot, for example, in the hotbar, which is here, we need to get its parent, then parent of the parent, which is the hotbar, and then we can get the ch second child, which is the item's parent. This isn't the best method to do it, because when we would change the order in which these parents are in the hierarchy, it wouldn't work, but I think we don't have to be doing any complicated system for now. And I see that I put the line into wrong else, it has to be in this first one when we are placing the item. So we are setting the parent of the direct object, and we'll also need to add this line when we are switching the items, and returning the item to the last slot. So I added this line, which is setting the parent of the slot that held item. Then we are setting the parent of the direct object. This is the same. And when we are returning the item to the last slot, we are again setting the parent of the direct object. Now you can see that it is not working the best, but we'll fix it. So when I drag the hammer over here, right now I can't see it, but when I release it, it is set to its correct parent. But you can see that when I'm dragging the hammer and I don't release it, Right now, it still is not visible. To fix this, we will create a separate canvas for the item. So we can select the item, one of the prefabs in the scene, add component, canvas, and now I will just go to the overrides and we will apply the canvas to the prefab. And what the canvas allows us to do is that we can override sorting, set the sort order to something higher, like 1, and again I will save it to all of the prefabs. So now all of the items should have the sort order on one. Now when I take the item, you can see that it is still visible even when I'm jogging it between the hotbar and the inventory. This is because the sort order. And another thing that has gotten broken is when I pick up the items, you can see the scale is wrong. So we'll jump to the inventory manager. When we are picking up the item and instantiating the item, I will just set its scale. Yeah, this seems to be working well. Now we can get back to the hotbar. I will quickly take all of the prefabs for our items and put them under the hand parent. I recommend you to drag the game window somewhere here so that when you are positioning the items to the player hand, you can also see what the player is seeing. I have added all of the items to the player hand and from all of them, we can obviously delete the component rigid body, also the collider, and also the item pickable script because we will create a new one for the items in the player's hand. So create new script. I will call it item hand and put it to all of the items in player's hands. In the script item hand, we will just add a public reference for the item scriptable object so that when we are selecting the item in the hotbar, we can compare the selected item and the item in the hand. If the item in the hand is the selected item, we can just turn it on. Don't forget to assign all of these scriptable objects. If on the items you don't want to be seeing that we have removed the rigid body and so on, you can just right click to the prefab, prefab and unpack completely. Back in the inventory manager, in the hotbar item changed void, when the slot is the selected slot, we will need to check if there is some held item in the slot, and if there is, we will go through all of the childs of the hand parent and turn on the item that we have selected. If the current slot that we are going through the loop is holding some item, then we go through all of the childs of the hand parent, so through all of the item hand objects, then we are getting this current item hand object, we are getting the item scriptable object from it, and if this scriptable object is the same that we have on the selected hotbar slot, so we get the inventory slot script, from it we get the held item from it, we get the inventory item and then the item scriptable object. So we are just comparing if the item scriptable object on the slot 
is the same as the item scriptable object that we have in the hand. If this is true, we just get the child on the index of i, which is the current that we are going through the loop, we get the game object and we set it to active. Make sure that you have all of the items that you want to be able to pick up in the hand and we can try it. So right now it is not showing anything. When I select the hammer here, select the first slot, you can see that I have selected hammer. When I select second, I have nothing in my hand. I can try selecting all of these and it should work with all of them. You could have seen that when I have the fourth slot selected, I put the machete here, it is not updating. So we'll just need to call the void even when we just change the items in our inventory. So in the void on pointer up, at the end, we can just call the hotbar item changed to make sure that it is changing correctly. So I have selected the first slot. I take the bed, put it here and everything is working. I can put as many items to the inventory and it is working with all of them. Now we can work on the stackable items. So jump to the inventory item script. We'll need to add some variables for the current stack size and for the max stack size. We'll add a text so that we can show the current stack size. In the update, we'll be setting the text of the stack text, but I want to show it only if the stack size max is greater than one, so that when I have some weapon, I don't want it to be showing just one. And on the void start, we want to set the stack size max to the stack size that we define in the script table object for which we have variable here. Now to the prefab of the item, we can just add the text and set it to the variable. Make sure that if in the script you have added the type just text, that you are adding the legacy and not the text mesh pro. So we have the text on the start. I don't want it to be showing anything. And I will also set it to the variable. And I also forgot in the inventory item to set the stack current on the start to just one. I have set the maximum stack size of the machete to 3 and you can see it in the inventory. We can see the text only when the stack size is greater than 1, but it is on 0 when I have picked it up. So we'll go to the inventory manager and when we pick up the item, we'll just set the stack size to 1. Just this one line. Now we will need to add many if statements, so we'll begin by switching the items. So we want to switch the items when the stack size current is equal to the max size. So we are switching the items if the slot is not equal to null, the slot held item is also not equal to null, and the stack current on the inventory item in the slot is equal to the maximum size of the stack. But we also want it to switch if those two types of items are different. I have added OR and if the item scriptable object on the inventory item which is in the slot is not equal to the scriptable object on the inventory item on the dragged object, then we can just switch them. Right after this if, we'll add else if. And here we'll be filling the item stack. So these two conditions will be the same. And at the same time, we want to make sure that the stack max is greater than the stack current and the scriptable objects on these two items are the same. So if the slot is not equal to null, the slot held item is also not equal to null and the stack current of the slot held item is less than the max stack of this item and at the same time the slot held item has the same scriptable object as the dragged object, then we can fill the stack. I will create references for these two inventory items so we don't have to be getting the components all of the time. 
So we are just setting those two inventory items by getting components. Then I will create an integer. How many items it takes us to fill the stack on the slot? We can calculate this just by taking the maximum stacks on the slot and subtracting the current slots from this. So now we have the integer, how many items it takes us to fill the slot health items stack. And now if this number is greater than the stack size of the dragged item, it means that we can fit all of the items from the dragged item to the slot. We will destroy the dragged item. Otherwise, we will need to keep both of them and just fill the stack on the slot health item as much as we can. So if we can fill the stack on the slot health item, we can just add the dragged item that stack current, just the count, and then we can destroy the dragged object. Else, we will just fill the stack on the slot health item, we will decrease the stack current on the dragged item, and we can set the dragged object back to its last position to the last item slot. I have added multiple machetes so that we can try stacking them. So we can see that we have just one for each one of them. But when I drag it over, yeah, now we have two, now we have three. But the three is the max stack size. So when I drag it over here, you can see that they are just switching. I can stack these, uh, but I still can't stack these because there's two, there's three. And when I drag, for example, the bed over the machete, it still is switching because the scriptable objects are not the same. But you can see that when I try dragging some of the items somewhere to the background of the inventory, it is giving us error, but this is pretty easy to fix. We can go to the inventory manager and on the 146 line, we just need to add these two checks after the OR. So it should look like this. This is for the switching of the items. So we need to check if the slot is not equal to now and the health item is not equal to now in both cases. And now using the scriptable objects, you should be able to add many more stackable items, set the max stack sizes, all of that stuff. And you can see that it is still working. We have the hotbar. We can select which item we want to be holding in our hand. We can still drop them, pick them up. Obviously the stack size when we drop the item is not working, but we'll fix that next time. I hope that this series was useful to you so far. If you have any other suggestions for tutorials that I should make, let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe and I will see you in next videos. Bye!